All right. Well, what you're looking at is basically a spinal column. You know? From a bug. From a bug. I'm not saying I'm a bug or nothing. But uh, imagine you have segments, like an armadillo or one of those potato bugs. And each one of those segments is rigid. But in order to make that organism capable of moving throughout its environment, it has to be flexible. So each one of those segments is able to articulate within itself so that it can accommodate a motion. So even though it's completely rigid at each one of those points, they can accommodate that motion. And that is exactly what we've tried to accomplish here in as little a time as possible with the simplest materials and, you know, least amount of time <laughs> that uh, I was willing to spend with my attention span. You're okay. <laughs> so yeah, so what are the properties of it turned out to be? Properties are, it has incredible stiffness. Whoa! Oh, there we go. There we go. So <laughs> there are weak spots. Obviously, in between the joints, where the two segments meet, you have the least amount of material. And that is where... <laughs> <laughs> it broke. Yeah, this is this is where the bug gets ripped apart and you can just suck the juices out of it. But, you know, obviously this is the least amount of material required to make so. strength. It's actually counterintuitive though. It's actually better in this direction than it is the other direction. Really? Yeah. Oh. Okay, yeah, it is. Yeah, because it's able to... It's able to push these together, and this whole side is able to stretch. But I think, I think like you were saying, so much of the strength is coming from these flanges right here. So I'm, I'm tempted to remove these flanges and just see how much of the strength is actually removed. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I, <laughs> I think a lot of the strength will be removed. But I, I think it'll still t keep a lot of its torsional strength. Which is pretty good. I'm not saying it's unbelievably good, but all things considered, mm -hmm. it's pretty good. This is, this is very discontinuous carbon fiber. Each one of these little segments is a little scrap of carbon. There is no continuous fiber that runs from one end to the other. So the fact that we're able to get this much strength from just a simple piece of foam is pretty incredible. So, you know, despite some of the drawbacks and obviously some of the uh, malfunctions, <laughs> it's still providing some uh, pretty good feedback and uh, the next step is to spend a little more time and decide which of the orientations of the fibers is promoting the best results and also removing this flange to understand mm -hmm. how much the curvature and, and also the and the segments are providing also probably a fiberglass on the opposite side because right. it's not a complete box yet um, and we do the cross grain fiberglass so it's able to um, stretch more easily. Because as it, as it is right now, it is not a torsion box. It is partially a torsion box because, I mean, it does have this surface from the foam. The foam does provide that, but it is but, but not... It, but the, but it's, it's, this foam is totally outclassed by the carbon fiber. Right. Two dissimilar materials. Mm -hmm. So, there's no doubt that it's strong. Ugh. Carbon fiber and foam. Winning up a pretty good fight right here. I'm not Conan the Barbarian, but I'm definitely putting a good amount of strength in here. And this is just one layer of oh, carbon wow. fiber. 
Now we have the exoskeleton here. The bug has been gutted. Can... It's, like, it's like watermelon out right here. <laughs> that. Cool. So, we got glass on the top now. Check it out. We now have a ton of torsional strength. It will flex like this okay. more than it will flex like this. You have to, you have to exaggerate because I can't even see. Oh, like, it's like it's not doing anything because <laughs> it's freaking really strong torsionally. <sighs> yeah, I was afraid we were gonna break it, but I'm now it's just making me angry. Oh, I see some. I see some. <laughs> <laughs> so it takes that much energy or effort to get it to torque, okay? But it takes very little effort to get it to flex, which is ideal if you're trying to make a super poppy, playful skateboard deck that's relatively lightweight. So we have created a very, very basic structure from foam and single layers of carbon fiber and fiberglass. It seems to work. And it is actually working. Mm -hmm. So this, like I said, is just a small sample to understand what it is we're trying to accomplish and how we can apply it. Now, we've understood that this is a viable concept and works on a small scale, so the next step is to just make it bigger. Yeah. How much bigger? Well, maybe the size of a skateboard bigger. So, mm -hmm. the next step is to adapt this into something that we can bolt some skateboard trucks onto Put a kicktail on and start ripping around on the pavement and see if we can actually accomplish the same properties that we're getting out of this test sample on a full-size longboard and try to understand if it's a benefit or a complete waste of time. <laughs> Hopefully it will be a benefit and everybody will be like, whoa, this is the future of skateboarding, but uh, I can't predict the future. So. Stay tuned. I want to get a really close look up at this, uh, this fiberglass at the bottom. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's really coarse. And it's just in this direction, right? Yep, it's completely unidirectional. There's only really thin nylon uh, like stitches, and that's just to hold the fiberglass together before you cure it. So literally there's just threads of carbon, or I'm sorry, fiberglass, that are then, you know, bound together in a big roll of tape. So this, this basically has no strength in this direction. At least the glass does. Yeah, the glass. The, glass, the glass is providing no strength. But when you turn it like this, and it's actually a complete cross section with the carbon fiber on the bottom, it then is linked and creates an extremely strong Torsional body. Yeah. Which is, you know, ideal. And we can continue to evolve the orientation of this glass on the surface to provide strength in more directions than what we have accomplished here. Yeah, depending on how it turns out when we actually make it out of wood. Exactly. We can, we can essentially tune the physical properties of the board in the sense that you can allow it to flex in certain directions but not others while still creating very very exotic shapes that are not limited to you know how much you can press into wood because glass will conform to much more you know, or much crazier shapes <laughs> so stay tuned because this just got a whole lot more interesting. So should we try and break it now? Because I really want to freaking break this thing. It's starting to piss me off. Ready? <laughs> One more time. Okay. So it um it was a shear. Right? Yeah, right, right along here. Or is it a... 
it just separated. It probably twice. had. It probably what it probably did is it probably started a crack here, that then spread. I would I would call it a delamination. Yes, it was. Interesting man. That was strong. Yeah. I imagine if that was wood. This is literally just insulation foam. So we know that's not providing much in the way of, you know, strength. Hmm. It bends quite a bit, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, delammed. It's still pretty torsionally strong here. It's, a, it's on the breaking point. Well, that so was our, uh, that's what we call destructive testing. Yes. It's a lot more fun. Mm -hmm. Anything to add, David? I don't think there's anything to add, except for... Nothing. Cool. Other planet. Destructive testing center over and out.